All right, guys, so this is our review for the semester exam. Our first question is asking which of the following graphs depicts a line that has a slope of zero? Zero slope. We've got four choices here. We're looking for the one that has a zero slope. All right, so A, what kind of slope do we have on A? Zero slope. All right, so obviously the choice or the correct answer to number one should be A. That has a zero slope. Horizontal line has a zero slope. Now on the test, I may not ask you for a zero slope. I may ask you for an undefined slope. Which one of those would have an undefined slope? A. B. This one over here would be an undefined slope. So a vertical line is undefined. What about C? What kind of slope is that one? Positive, Positive slope. And D would have a negative slope. And we know that because C over here goes up and D goes down. So I could ask you one of those four questions. All right, so that takes care of the first one. Let's turn to the next page and take a look at number two. All right, so here's question number two. Question number two, they're asking us, which equation below represents a line that has a slope of two-thirds and also passes through the point zero, negative two? So they've given me two things. They've given me a slope, and they've also given me a point. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by writing down what I know. I know an x, I know a y, and I also know the m is slope. I know those three things, and I'm going to write those three things down. First of all, the x in the order pair was 0. The y value in the order pair was negative 2. And the slope was 2 thirds. So that's the first thing I know. That's our first box. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those three things and I'm going to plug it into that slope-intercept point. That's this one right here. All right, so I'm going to replace the y with our negative 2. I'm going to replace the m with 2 thirds. That's our slope. And I'm going to replace our x with a 0. All right, so there it is. I've taken all the values and plugged them in for x, y, and m. And now I'm going to do a little math here, see what B is. So uh, 2 thirds times 0. What's 2 thirds times 0? 0. Which, of course, is that 0. Really, what we have is negative 2 equals B. So B equals negative 2. I now know what the y intercept is negative 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two values and I'm going to plug it in to this right here. I'm going to write my slope intercept form. I know m was 2 thirds, that's what was given to me. And I just found the b, b was negative 2. So this is my slope intercept form. But we got a problem here. Is that one of our choices? No, obviously that is not one of our choices. And that's because rather than giving it to us in the slope intercept form, they've given us our choices in standard form. So I'm going to have to take this thing right here and convert it into our standard form. Okay, so let's go ahead and fix that so that it looks more like these equations over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is move the x next to the y. So that's what happens on all these others over here. So when I do that, it now becomes negative 2 thirds x. Still got a positive y, and I'm going to keep that negative 2. So all I did was move the 2 thirds x to the other side. Now does it look like any of these over here? Not quite. We're almost there, but not quite. What I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to fix this equation. And the way I'm going to fix this equation is I'm going to multiply that thing by something. The question is, what is it? Three. 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 That is right. And where do we get the three from? Denominator. It's the denominator. But on top of that, guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a negative three. Because you'll notice the first number over here on most of these are positive. So I'm going to use a negative three. Because x can't be a negative number. All right, so let's see what happens here. Negative 3 times negative 2 thirds. If you don't know what that is off the top of your head, put it in your calculator. What do you get when you multiply that? Negative 3 times negative 2 thirds. Close. It's negative times a negative, which is a positive 2. Positive 2x. Two. Positive All right, now what I'm going to do is multiply the negative 3 times the y. Negative 3 times y is negative 3y. And one last time here, the negative 3 times this negative 2 would make a positive 6. 
So this is the one I'm looking for. This is the standard form. So let's look through the choices carefully and see if we can find which of those says 2x minus 3y equals 6. That would be choice A. So a lot of work involved in that particular problem. Got to get slope-intercept form first and then convert it into our standard form. All right, number three is just the opposite of that one. This time what they've done is they've given us the standard form, and we have to turn around and write it into slope-intercept form. So let's see how that works. So here's our problem. Here's our standard form. And I want to make that say y equals. Well, the first thing I see is that 5. And I don't like fractions, so I'm going to get rid of that fraction by multiplying everything times a 5. Look what's going to happen when we multiply everything by 5. This 5 and this 5, they cancel each other out, leaving us with a 2x. Same thing's going to happen with this other fraction. That 5 and this 5 cancel each other out, leaving us with a 4y. But we still got to multiply 5 times the 4. 5 times the 4 is going to give us a 1. So now it's a little easier to work with. Now there's no fractions in it. Still doesn't say y equals, but at least there's no fractions in it. So now what I'm going to do is move the 2x to the other side. And we're going to do that with subtraction which now makes it a negative 2x. So now I have 4y equals negative 2x plus 20. I'm almost there. i got to get rid of that 4 that's in front of the y. So now I'm going to come over here and divide everything by 4. Alright, so this is now y equals. With our calculators, let's divide negative 2 by 4. Negative 2 divided by 4 is negative one-half, and 20 divided by 4. 20 divided by 4 would be a 5, positive 5. At this point, I've got y by itself. I've got my slope-intercept form. So which one of those choices has the same thing I have? B. So B would be the correct answer here. So not quite as much work as number two, but still, got to do some work. All right, let's take a look at number four. Number four says that Jose must work at least 30 hours each week. However, he's not allowed to work more than 40 hours in that week, which inequality correctly depicts the number of hours, and we're going to use H to represent hours, Jose can work in a week. So there's two things here. Remember, we're using H for hours. Two things we got to consider. First of all, it says he must work at least 30 hours. At least 30 hours. What does that mean? 30 hours or less or more? More. 30 hours or more. So we're going to use the greater than or the less than symbol if we want 30 hours or more. Greater. Greater than or equal to. Because we can work 30 hours or more. Okay, so one of the things we're going to have to see in our inequality would be this right here. But it also says that he cannot work over 40 hours. we got to consider that as well. All right, so since he can't go over 40 hours, it's going to have to be less than or equal to 40 hours. So we ought to consider both of those things in our answer. Now let's see if there's any that we can eliminate real quick here. Do you see anything we can eliminate right off the bat? We can definitely eliminate A. That for sure. Which, uh, which is the other one? B, well, let's hold off on B here. Uh, D for sure, because look here, it says A, uh, H is less than 30, and that's not true. So I'm going to narrow this thing down to either B or C. Now notice what they've done here. They've combined both of those inequalities into one inequality, and that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take these two and make one out of it. All right, so here we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep that h is less than or equal to 40. I'm going to take this one right here, and I'm going to include it in this thing that I have over here. But when I do that, since the h is on this side, I'm now going to flip that inequality so that the 30 becomes on the left-hand side. So it says the same thing, it's just in the reverse. Here it says h is greater than or equal to 30. 
over here in this answer, I have h or negative, not negative, but 30 is less than or equal to h. So this is the same thing as these two over here, which would mean the correct answer is b. It's a little trickier there because they combine both inequalities into one. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to number five. For number five, we're given a graph, and we're asked to find which of the following equations best describes this line that is correct. All right, so let's see here. First of all, let's identify a couple of things. The two things we're going to identify here are the slopes and the y-intercepts. Let me start with the y-intercept. That's going to be this point right here. The y-intercept is negative 5. The next thing I'm going to identify is the slope. And in order to do that, I'm going to need at least one other point. And the point that I'm going to use is that one right there. It doesn't have to be. That's just the one that I chose. So if I want to go from one point to the other, first of all, notice I'm going to have to rise one, two, three, four, five times to rise. Then I have to run one, two, three. So I rise five, run three. What's that? The y-intercept? Oh, Because it's over here at negative five. It's on the negative side. So these are the two things that I've identified, the y-intercept and the slope. And now that I have those two things, I can write an equation that looks like this right here. Hopefully it's in that, in that form, but if not, we'll work with it. All right, so the slope. We just identified the slope as being 5 thirds. So let me replace the n with 5 thirds. And we've also identified the b, the y-intercept, as a negative 5. So let's see if we can find this equation as one of our choices. Y'all see that one as one of the choices? That would be choice B. Y equals 5 thirds X minus 5. All right, so that takes care of that. All right, let's move on. Next one, number 6. Number 6, we have the line Y equals MX plus B that passes through the point 2, negative 3. It also has a slope of 2 thirds. And we want to know what is the y-intercept of that line. All right, so we worked one like this just a second ago. We know a couple of things here. We know an x, we know a y, and we also know an m, the slope. So I'm going to start by writing down those things. x was 2. That's this number right here. y is negative 3. That's this number right here. And the slope is 2 thirds. That's this number right here. So this is what I know. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take those three numbers and I'm going to plug it into slope intercept form. That's this thing right here. So let's take out the y and what are we going to replace that y with? What else? Negative 3. Good. M, we'll replace that with a 2 over 3. X, we're going to replace that with a 2. And we have no idea what B is. By the way, what does B stand for again? Y-intercepts. And that's exactly what we're looking for, the Y-intercepts. So let's see if we can find that B, the Y-intercepts. All right, so first thing we're going to do is go ahead and multiply these two numbers together. Two-thirds times two would be a four-thirds. Now don't panic here. Go ahead and get your calculator hand, uh, ready here. What we're going to do is we're going to take that negative 3 and we're going to add or subtract the 4 thirds. Subtract the 4 thirds. All right. So negative 3 minus 4 thirds. See what you get. Negative 13 over 3. All right. Somebody double check that one. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we end up with negative 13 over 3. And that's definitely possibility because that's one of our answers right over here. This is our y-intercept, negative 13 over 3. All right, so there's number 6. For number 7, they want us to determine the slope of the graph 
of a linear equation that has the equation negative 3x minus 6y equals 5. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and rewrite it so that it's in slope intercept form. I want it to look like this. Because if I didn't have it written like this, all I have to do is look here for the slope. Alright, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to take the negative 3x minus 6y equals 5. We're going to start by moving the 3x to the other side. What's going to happen when we move that 3x to the other side? It's going to change to a positive. So now we've got positive 3x plus the 5. So there's my first move. And then we're going to take care of the negative 6. Can't have it there. So we're going to divide everything by negative 6. That way we can have y by itself. 3 divided by negative 6 negative one half and five divided by a negative six would be a negative five over six. So this becomes our new equation. Now I don't need the whole equation. The only thing the question asked me for was the slope. So which one of those numbers is the slope? Negative one half. This is my slope right here. Of course come test time I could very easily ask you what is the y-intercept. And if that's the case, the y-intercept would be negative 5 over 6. So we do got to make sure we're reading the questions carefully so that we don't answer the wrong thing. Alright, so there's number 7. Alright, number 8. Number 8, they're asking us, what is h of 3 if f of t equals 3 times negative t squared minus 5t minus 10? Sounds confusing, but this is probably one of the easier questions here, guys. All they're really asking you to do is take this 3 right here and plug it in for every t that we see in that equation. Alright, so I'm looking right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that t with the number 3. Okay, so inside the parentheses I have a negative 3. The negative came from that right there. It was already there. Minus 5. I'm going to replace that t with a 3, but make sure you, when you put that 3 in, you don't put it like this, because then it looks like 53. You want to make sure it's in parentheses, like this here. And then make sure you have the minus 10. So all you're going to do now that you have all the numbers plugged in is put it in your calculator exactly like we have it written, with parentheses and everything. So let me give you a minute here to put that in. 3 parentheses negative 3 squared minus 5, parentheses 3, parentheses minus 10. All of that in the calculator gives us a 2. So C would have been the correct answer. Very easy. Of course, what's that? You got 52. Make sure you have parentheses. Make sure you didn't forget that negative sign there. And also, make sure that this one right here is a minus and not a negative. Sometimes we accidentally use the wrong one. Should be two. Should be a two. Now, of course, come test time, I could very easily change that number on you. I could change this whole thing on you, or I could change both of them. So just be very, very careful. All right, let's go on to number nine. For number nine, it says the table shows the x and y values of a linear function. What is the x-intercept of this graph? I want the x-intercept. Well, the x-intercept, how was an x-intercept written? Number and then zero. That's what I'm looking for. And unfortunately, it's not in the table. But if you look at our choices, there are already a couple of choices I can get rid of. I can get rid of A and D. And that's because those are y-intercepts, and I'm looking for an x -intercept. So at the very least, if you're going to guess, at least you're giving yourself a better chance of guessing correctly. Alright, so it's got to be one of these two right here. So let's see if we can find it. What I'm going to do, just like we were doing earlier, is I'm going to find the slope first. We're going to take this and subtract this. 3 minus 9. 3 minus 9 is what? negative 6. Then I'll subtract my x's. 2 minus a negative 2 is 4. And a negative 6 divided by positive 4 gives us a negative, negative 3 over 2. 
That's my slope. Now I'm going to write down what I know. The x, the y, and the n. Now to do that, x and y, all I only need one point, one ordered pair. And I'm going to use the very first one in our table. I'm going to use this right here. Negative 2 is the x. 9 is the y. And the slope, I just found that. That was negative 3 over 2. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take those three numbers and I'm going to plug it into this thing right here. Just like we've been doing on several examples. So y will replace that with a 9. m will replace that with a negative 3 over 2. the x will replace that with a negative 2. And I'm looking for b. All right, so let's see what we end up with here. Negative 3 over 2 times negative 2 gives us a positive what? 3. Of course, I don't want the 3 on that side. I want it on the other side. So we're going to right. subtract it. Minus. And 9 minus 3 is 6. All right, so let's write our equation. And that equation is y equals... What? Negative 3 over 2x. That's our slope. And the y-intercept, we just found that one. That was 6. So here's our equation. Now don't rush here, guys, because what did the question ask for? The x-intercept or the y-intercept? X-intercept. What is this right here? The y-intercept. Notice they even put that as a choice because they know somebody is going to make that mistake and say, oh, I see a 6 there, so that's got to be the right answer. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. I tell you what, let's take a look at the graph of this thing right here. Everybody go to your calculator and go to y equals. What I want you to do is in y equals, I want you to type in this equation. Negative 3 over 2x plus 6. Negative 3 over 2x plus 6. Remember, the x is right next to the green button. Negative 3 over 2x plus 6. Graph it. And when you graph it, obviously you're going to see a line because it's a linear function. What you're doing is you're looking for the x-intercept. You want to see where does that line touch the x-axis. And where does it touch the x-axis? At 4, 0. This is our answer. If I had to ask me for y-intercept, it would have been 6. But in this case, they asked me for the x-intercept, so it's cool. All right, so that's number nine. All right, next one. Which of the following represents an equation that goes through the line 1 half, negative 3, and also goes through the point negative 5 over 2, negative 5? So it's the same thing as some of the others, but we have some fractions in here, but it's all right. We can make it work here. Let's start by finding the slope. We're going to subtract the y's first. So we're going to do negative 5 minus the negative 3. And negative 5 minus a negative 3 gives us negative 2. Then we're going to do the same thing with the x's. We're going to take the x's, negative 5 over 2, and we're going to subtract the other x. One half. Again, don't panic. You got a calculator. Subtract. Negative five over two minus one half is negative three. And then we'll divide those two numbers. Negative two divided by negative three gives us a positive two over three. So I now know the slope is two over three. Now before I go any further, let me stop right there for a second. Look at our choices. Are there any choices in there that don't have a slope of two-thirds? We can get rid of B. That doesn't have a slope of two-thirds. And we can also get rid of D because it doesn't have a slope of two-thirds either. So we've got it narrowed down to either A or C. It's got to be one of those. So let's see the y-intercepts. Let's write down what we know. I'm using this point right here. 1 half is the x, negative 3 is the y, and 2 thirds is my m. 
But let's take those three numbers and let's plug it into that same form that we've been using, the slope intercept form. For the y, we're going to replace that one with a negative 3, and we'll replace that with a 2 thirds, x will replace that with a 1 half. Alright, so let's multiply here. 2 thirds times 1 half. 2 thirds times 1 half. Put that in your calculator. 1 third. I don't want the one third on that side. I want it on the other side. So are we going to add it or are we going to subtract it? Subtract it. So a negative three minus one third, and I'm running out of room, so I'll bring it over here. Negative ten over three. So out of these two choices we have remaining here, which one has the y-intercept of negative ten thirds? C. So that's got to be our answer right there. C is the answer. All right, for number 11, they're asking us which of the following is not a function? Not a function. Well, let me remind you, in order to be a function, your x's can't do what? Repeat. So we're looking for the ones that have x's repeat. That's the one that's not a function. So if we look at choice A, I've got an x, an x, an x, and an x. Do you see any of those x's repeat? Yes. Notice how the three repeats. Therefore, this one is not a function, and that's because the threes repeat it. You'll notice all the other examples, none of these x's repeat themselves. They're all different numbers. So as long as they're different numbers, it's a function. Anytime they repeat, though, it's not a function. All right, number 12. Number 12 says 8 more than twice the square of a number x equals 6 less than 8 times the number. Which equation below can be used to find the number? Now let's take this one little big piece at a time. Let me start with this piece right here. 8 more than. 8 more than, the word more than means we're going to add 8 to something. We don't know what that something is just yet, but we know we're adding 8 to something. That's the first part. What are we adding it to? We're going to add it to twice the square of a number. Twice. Twice means you're going to multiply by 2. And what is it that we're multiplying by 2? An x squared. So that's that part. Then it says right here, equals. So there's my equal sign. Then it goes on to say 6 less than. 6 less than means we're going to take 6 away from something. The question is, what are we taking 6 away from? In this case, we're taking it away from 11 times the number. How would I write 11 times the number? 11x. So this is what I'm looking for. So look closely here because there are several that look very similar. Which one would the correct answer be? B. B would be the answer to number 12. All right, number 13. To enter an amusement park, you must pay an entry fee of $25, and then each ride is going to cost you an additional $2.25. Which of the following best represents the cost, and we're going to use C for cost, of riding in ride? N is going to be how many rides we get on. All right, so C. C is going to be the cost. How do we calculate that cost? Well, first of all, they're charging an entry fee of 25 bucks. So you start off paying 25 bucks. But if you want to get on a ride, you're going to have an additional cost. Additional means you're going to add. How much are we adding? $2.25 per ride. Per ride. So we're going to take that $2.25 and multiply it by N. N represents how many rides you get. Alright, so let's look closely. Do you see one that looks exactly like that? C. Well, it's not exactly like that, but it is similar, right? All they did was take these two things right here, 
and switch them around. And that's perfectly fine because we're at it. So C would be the best option. It means the same thing. And so 13 is C. All right, last page here. For number 14, they're asking us to identify the range of the graph. I want you to circle the word range. That's an important word there. Range, is that the x or is that the y values? Lots. But just knowing that much, let's come down here to the choices and see if we can get rid of anything. You see anything we can get rid of? C. C. Why can't we get rid of C? Because it says x. So we know we're not picking that. It's got to be one of these others. So let me see here. I'm looking at only the y's. Let me start with this point right here. What's the y value on that one? Negative 3. That's the y value. What's the y value on this one? Negative 2. What's the y value on this one? Positive 2. The y value on that one is 2. The y value on that one is 3. And the y value on this one is 4. So what I want to do is I want to find one of the choices that has the y values Negative 3, negative 2, 2, 3, and 4. That would be choice B. I could very easily tomorrow change the, where the dots are. I could maybe ask instead of range, I could ask you for domain. A lot of different ways that I could change this question up. Alright, next one, number 15. For number 15, they say if f of x equals 2x plus 1 over x minus 4 for all values of x except for 4, what is f of 2? So it's kind of like one that we saw earlier. We're going to come over here and we're going to replace x with the number 2. That's all we're doing. So this x right here is going to get replaced with a 2. And that x down at the bottom is also going to be replaced with a 2. Now, just so that we don't make any careless mistakes, I'm going to do the top part first. 2 times 2 plus 1. What do you get when you do 2 times 2 plus 1? You get a 5. Down at the bottom, we have 2 minus 4. 2 minus 4 is negative 2. And then if I divide those two numbers, 5 divided by negative 2 is negative 5 over 2. And there we have it. So all we did was take out the x and replace it with the number 2. Of course, tomorrow on the test, I could decide to change the number 2 to something else. I could change this thing entirely, but it all works the same way. Just take out the x and replace it with some number. All right, last one, guys, here. Solve the equation for x. Get x by itself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all those parentheses. So here it goes. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. We're going to keep that 2x. We're also going to keep the 4 for now. And now I'm going to do distributive property again. Negative 7 times x is negative 7x. Negative 7 times 1 is negative 7. So there's no more parentheses. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each side of the equal sign and see if there's anything I can combine. So I'm looking at this side right here first. Notice there's a 2x or a 3x and a 2x. We're going to put those together. So if there's 3x's and two more x's, now you got a total of 5x's. I'm going to do the same thing with those numbers, negative 6 and 4. If I add them together, negative 6 plus 4 is going to give us negative 2. Now notice on this other side, I can't add those two together. That's because one has an x on it, the other doesn't. So I'm going to leave it as negative 7x minus 7. So it's a little bit smaller, which means I'm getting closer to my answer. Now what I'm going to do is get all the x's on one side. And the way I'm going to do that is take these seven x's and add them to this side over here. So no more x's on this side. They're gone. So five x's, I just added seven x's, so that means I now have 12 of those x's. Closer here. That 2, we're going to move that 2 to the other side. So since they're subtracting it, I'm going to add it. All right, so no more 2 on this side. And I'll bring it up over here so you can see it. 
So now we got 12x equals, let's see, negative 7 plus 2, that's going to give us negative 5. We're here at our final step. That final step is to divide by 12, that's going to be 1x by itself. And a negative 5 divided by 12 will be a negative 5 over 12. And there it is. All right, so that is the review for our text. Now, obviously, that's not everything. That's only half of what you'll see. Uh, what do we think?